Hi folks, I'm going to show you how you can use Hasura on Postgres to get a GraphQL API and then use GraphQL to chart JS to convert a GraphQL response into an instant chart. I'm going to use an existing database in this demo and then create a view, a Postgres view on it, uh, query that with GraphQL and then build a chart. So let's get started by deploying Hasura on Heroku. Let's call this app G2C demo and we get a Postgres database. So let's deploy that. Now let's connect to the underlying Postgres database. So that's the Postgres database here. And uh, let's see if that's working. Cool, we have no tables inside this database, but I have a SQL dump of the Chinook database. So let's try and import that. All right, the data import is running. Let's go back to Hasura. Um, so that's Hasura deployed. If I go to the data tab, I'll see that these are the tables that are available in the database. I'm gonna track all of them. And then I'm going to track all of the uh, foreign keys as relationships. I can basically start querying just to verify that this is working. So I can query for albums and ID and title. Cool. So there's no data inside it yet, which is why we're getting an empty array. All right. So um, now I also have a um, React.js app set up. I have uh, imported GraphQL to chart.js. I've imported the React chart.js library and I've set up React Apollo. And uh, let's just check if our React Apollo app is set up correctly. Um, so let's set up this endpoint to this uh, URL. And so we have that set up here. This is just a simple Apollo client setup, nothing fancy here. Um, and the app.js is, this is where we'll kind of build out our chart. So now what I would like to do is, um, if you see that these are the albums that we have in our database, what I want to do is count how many artists have how many albums. So I'm going to run an aggregation for doing this. So let's say create, or let's try out the SQL query first. So let's do select artist ID, count ID from the albums table, and let's group by artist ID. So that kind of tells us, uh, you know, what artist ID has, how many, you know, has what, uh, has a certain number of albums in this database. So let's convert this to a view. And as soon as we have a view, what I can do is I can query the view with GraphQL. So let's do query artist albums and uh, let's get the artist ID and the count. All right, so that's our data. Now what I can do is I can use this to create my chart. So I'm going to call a create a query component, which has a query and let's open the GQL tag. And uh, so that's our query component. And uh, What we'll do here is if we have uh, data, then what we want to do is render our chart. So all we need to do to create our data is that we'll create an instance of GraphQL to chart.js as new GraphQL to chart.js and let's pass in the data argument here and this is going to be a bar chart. So now this will convert our data from the GraphQL response into the data that is right for a bar chart. And now all we need to do is render this. So let's do return bar data equals g2c dot data. That's where the data prop is. And uh, if this is not there, let's return uh, loading or error, right? It's one of these two. Add a semicolon here. And uh, just making sure that we've closed our braces right. And let's put a slash query here. Right, and we we'll have this running, and let's refresh this page. All right, so no data comes up here. That's because 
chart.js doesn't know what is the x-axis and what is the y-axis. So to pass that indication, let's do um, the artist ID is our label and the count is our data. So that's the x-axis and that's the y-axis. Label and data are names, are terms of the chart.js API. So as soon as we alias them in, GraphQ, in the GraphQL query, we can see that our chart is rendered here, right? And, um, and just to make this interesting, let's uh, add in a relationship here. So let's go to the um, artist albums table. Let's create a relationship here and let's have a relationship to the artist table through the artist ID column, right? So this will allow us to make a query that will fetch the name of the artist. Right, so now we get the name of the artist and the number of albums they have. So now what I can do is convert this to an artist and fetch the name here. Right, um, but because this is now a nested kind of object um, and not at the top level, what we'll have to do is do a little bit of transformation so that it comes at the top level again. So what we can do here is instead of passing the second argument, which is the name or the type of the chart, what we can do instead is pass in a transformation function that takes the data set name and the data point as arguments. And this function um, kind of iterates over all the elements or all the records in the response of the, in the GraphQL response uh, and allows us to transform the response. So we'll still create the chart type here called bar and uh, we'll name the label to label dot name, right? So that um, the alias maps up correctly. And um, oops, let's call this data point dot label dot name. And now you can see that we have a chart with the name. So if I hover here, um, I should see the name on the chart here, right? Um, we can also change the name of the data set by aliasing the query itself. So let's call this um, albums by artists, right? And um, as soon as I do that, we'll have this as the name of the data set. And uh, that's all it takes to kind of start building charts on your Postgres database. For more information, check out the README, uh, which should be there in the description of this video.